The Journal of the www.mu-atlantis.com Book 2 Truth is Stranger Than Fiction Hakim Bey www.mu-atlantis.com Preface The Journal of the Moorish Paradigm is a journal dedicated to Moorish science, history, and civilization. The goal is the formation and documentation of a Moorish paradigm or worldview. The Journal of the Moorish Paradigm is also designed chronicle the evolution of this Moorish paradigm. In this ongoing journal, we intend to introduce you to knowledge and information from a perspective that you will find nowhere else. This issue number two was originally published in February of 1997. Since going monthly, we have decided to rename this issue the February 2001, issue number two of the Journal of the Moorish Paradigm. We are now setting the Journal of the Moorish Paradigm for nationwide and international distribution. Any individual, store, vendor, organization, website, business, etc., interested in sell the Journal of the Moorish Paradigm can receive up to a 40% discount on the Journal of the Moorish Paradigm, books, DVDs, videotape, etc. Simply contact Bro Hakim Bey at. We want to thank all of the brothers and sisters who have assisted my throughout the years. Mu Atlantis, C slash O Hakim Bey. 980, Baychester ST. Bronx, New York, 10469-0705. Toll free, 866-841-9139, extension 3836. Peace. www.mu-atlantis.com. 3. One day, while coming home. From Bear Mountain in New York. The ancestors led me to a book. Called, The Ramapo Mountain. People, by David Stephen Cohen. The book is about a group of our. People, Aboriginal Moors, inhabiting. The Ramapo Mountains in. New York, not far from the Tappan. Z Bridge. The Ramapo are. An example of our people who did. Not integrate into so-called white. Society but who went into relatively inaccessible regions such as mountains in order to stay outside of the white society in which they seen their people enslaved and ill-treated. The Ramapo claim descent from the Tuscarora Indians who are a branch of the Cherokees from North Carolina. European society classified these people as Negroes, colored and slash or mulatto. They say that they are Aboriginal, Native American not brought here from anywhere else. Some now classify them as triracial isolates because they are said to be a mixture of the so-called black, red, and white. In reality these people are the descendants of our people, Aboriginal Moors, with later admixture of Mongol types, so-called Red Indian, whom some Moors call the Shiminits who came from Asia, and then later some admixture of Europeans who preferred our society to their own. The author of the book The Ramapo Mountain People, David Cohen says, in the eastern United States there are more than 200 isolated, racially mixed groups between 75,000 and 100,000 people, who claim Indian ancestry but maintain no tribal affiliations. 4. www.mu-atlantis.com Though it is obvious that these are our people, they outright reject the classification of Negro and Black. All. These groups. In the Eastern. United. States feel. The same. Way. This is because in the past they seen what happened to. Their brothers and sisters who classified themselves as Negro and. Black. 
and the property status conferred to them as in the case of Dred Scott. Their response to the slave label of Negro and Black is almost exactly the same as the Moors today, only they lacked the knowledge that noble Drew Alley brought us regarding our Moorish descent and history. They do know for sure that they are Aboriginal and were not brought here from Africa in slave ships. Here is another young Tuscarora, sister from the Ramapo Mountains. Vince Morgan, from Mawa, insists that the old-timers used to say that they were descended from Tuscarora Indians. The author, David Cohen says that they are not descended from the Tuscarora because based on his genealogical research, he concluded that they were the descendants of free blacks. But this again is the European S classification of us, and the lie perpetrated that you cannot look like us and be Aboriginal at the same time. Another example of this is in Robertson County, North Carolina, where in 1830 the majority of the population listed as free blacks consisted of people who considered themselves Indian. www.mu-atlantis.com 5. This Aboriginal elder, right, from the Ramapo region is a folk artist named Ed Morgan. In 1889 James Mooney, an anthropologist, working for the Smithsonian Institute, did research on Indian culture and survivors, and he came to the conclusion that there was undoubtedly considerable Indian ancestry among blacks in the southern coastal plain region. Regarding the powerful Powhatan Confederacy, the Chickahominy, Matapanai, Nansamond, Nottaway, Pamunkey, Potomac, and Rappahannock, who held dominion in the region around Virginia, Thomas Jefferson, in 1785 is recorded as saying that the Mataponis have more Negro than Indian blood in them. This is a play on words because what he refers to as Negro and Indian is one and the same people only victims of the divide and conquer strategy. This color-based white society caused many psychological problems among our people. In a book called Personality in a White Indian Negro Community, American Sociological Review, Vol.4, Guy B. Johnson says that the Croatan and Lumbees of Robertson County North Carolina had problems of personal adjustment, such as coming to terms with Negroid physical features, in the color-based white society. And the essay, Nanty Coke and Moore's Folk Medicines, by C.A. Wes Lager, he speaks about the aboriginals who call themselves Moore's and Nanty Cokes. He says, the Delawares, Shawnee, Seneca, Mexican, and other Eastern 6. www.mu-atlantis.com Indians claimed that their forebears originally received their knowledge of Mehtapasi Kun, magical and herbal science, from a tribe called the Nanticoke. He goes on to says regarding a community of aboriginals in Kent County, Delaware, that locally these people are called Moors. And he further says investigations among the Delaware Moors, starting in the fall of 1941, led me to conclude that the ancestry of many of the families included both Delaware and Nanticoke. Indians these people also were classified as Negro on the books of the Europeans, and Wes Lager documents the struggles of these people against that designation. This is a clay figurine of a Hopewell mound. Builder Woman from the Turner Pyramid and Mound Complex near Cincinnati, Ohio. James Hugo Johnston in the book Journal of Negro History, Vol. No. 14, concluded based on his research that the Indian has not disappeared from the land, but is now part of the Negro population of the United States. This is a very significant statement. All of the so-called millions of aboriginals that 
were said to have been wiped out, were not. All wiped out, but are in fact, us. The Moors or so-called Indians on the eastern seaboard of the United States were a maritime people and were the same Moors found on the other side of the Atlantic on the coasts from southwest Africa all the way up to England, Ireland, Scotland, Denmark, etc. In fact the people called the Danes and Vikings were actually originally Moorish navigators. David Mac Ritchie says in the book Ancient and Modern Britain's Vol. I on page 299. www.mu-atlantis.com 7. It seems likely that the Creek men, or pirates, were chiefly of the races of Cimbri, or Black Danes, and Mori, or Black A. Moors. He also says on the same page, they are better known in modern history under their general designation of Vikings. His spelling, same as Viking in meaning, or Creek men. The white Europeans found among the Vikings were the white serfs and peasants that David Mac Ritchie said the Danes and Vikings were terrorizing and kidnapping. These Moors or Danes also made them pay a tribute called the Dane Geld, from which was later derived the term blackmail. On page 309 he says, They are presented to us as piratical vikings or creek men, fit descendants of those black heathens that murdered, robbed and burned all along our shores, as far back as the 9th century. Left, here we have a Moorish brazier found among the remains of the Vikings. This maritime people called Danes, Vikings, Vikings, and Black Amors are the same Moors found along the rivers and creeks on the eastern coast of the United States and called Indians. These are the remnants of that ancient Atlantean Empire, the dominions of Amexim, that spanned the Atlantic and dominated the land. On both sides, we are the direct descendants of these Moors. David Mac Ritchie speaks of the Moors or Indians in Britain as being the same in appearance and culture as the ones here in this hemisphere. This is what accounts for all you hear coming from the Europeans now about the Vikings and Norse discovering America. Well I got news for them, those so-called Vikings you talk about were originally Moors. This Moorish paradigm is like Moses' rod, it is definitely swallowing up all other paradigms. 8. www.mu-atlantis.com The Europeans were used by the so-called Danish and Viking Moors as peasant serfs to work the feudal estates of the noble class of Moors, who were also known as cavaliers. The European women were sold largely as concubines to fill the harems of rich and noble Moors. This is not something that the Moors should be proud of. It is this which ultimately led to the enslavement of the Moors by their former slaves and serfs. What goes around, comes around. This is a picture of a Moorish Norman knight and his European concubine wife. When the Europeans began to free themselves and overcome the Moors who were oppressing them in Europe, they began to colonize the lands owned by the Moors in Europe as well as the eastern seaboard of the United States. David Mac Ritchie says on page 229 to 230 of Ancient and Modern Britons. The country of the Moors or Moray men of the north was colonized by the Norman Dutch people under the supervision of David I and his grandson, 
Malcolm IV. The native Moors or Indians, who may have been of early Pictish or of Danish stock, were first overcome after many severe conflicts. When this was finally accomplished, Malcolm IV removed them all from the land of their birth, and scattered them throughout the other districts of Scotland, both beyond the hills and on the other side thereof, so that not even a native of that land abode there, and he in www.mu-atlantis.com. 9. Stalled therein his own peaceful people. This was around the middle to late 1500s. Mac Ritchie then notes that, this plantation of Moray, as it was called, was distinctly a feudal prototype of the plantation of Virginia. Thus the white people who were enslaved and terrorized by the Moors in Europe, freed themselves under the Catholic Church by mixing and allying themselves with other Moors. They then overcame the Moors who oppressed them and took their lands, and put them on reservations, or outrightly exterminated them. This colonization technique was perfected first in Europe and then duplicated on the eastern seaboard of the United States under the auspices and guidance of none other than Sir Francis Bacon, who we will talk about in a minute. In Ancient and Modern Britons, page 374 to 375, vol.1. Mac Ritchie says, The Englishman who had colonized the western shores of the Atlantic, not more than a generation or two before Gross, spoke of the Indians there as being as black as gypsies. In 1676, the native races of New England were spoken of indifferently as Indians and Moors and our British Indians are also remembered as Moors. He continues by telling us that large companies of Moors or black people roamed up and down the country rather more than a hundred years ago, taking very considerable contribution from the farming classes and others, besides being possessed of many fierce and aggressive qualities. 10 www.mu-atlantis.com Thus it is seen that 1. The Moors were also known as the Danes and Vikings. 2. That they enslaved and exacted tribute from the European peasant and serf farmers, called the Danegeld or Black Male. The tribute of the Black Army. 3. That they were on both sides of the Atlantic. 4. That the term Moor and Indian were interchangeably applied to them. 5. That they were a maritime seafaring nation of people. 6. That the Europeans rose up, assisted by other Moors, took the Moorish lands, and enslaved them, exterminated them, and slash or put them on reservations. These Moors, also known as Danes, Vikings, Vikings, Picts etc., were regularly traveling back and forth across the Atlantic, and are the descendants of the ancient Atlanteans, who were also known as Phoenicians, Canaanites, Egyptians, etc. Left, is a picture of an ancient Phoenician navigator with black skin and the fez on his head. Another independent source showing that the so-called Indians on the eastern seaboard, Newfoundland, or Terra Nova were Moors, comes from a book recommended to me by Bro Schlama, called, Africans and Native Americans, by Jack D. Forbes. Forbes shows in the book how many so-called Native American www.mu-atlantis.com 11. Indians were sold into slavery in Africa and Europe, the exact opposite direction of what we were taught the slave trade went in. These Native Americans or Indians were classified as Negroes and Blacks, and Moors in the Slaves. Books of Seville Spain and elsewhere. On page 29 he says, Slaves from Terra Nova show up in the slave markets of Seville and Valencia. Very soon after 1500. For example, 
in Valencia during the period. To 1516, we find in 1503 Miguel. Manuel, in 1505 Juan and Pedro. In 1507 Antonio and Juan Marco, in 1515 Ali, now Melcher, in 1516. Catalina. They were all classified as Negroes. If we were first brought to North America around 1619 or even 1555, for that matter, then how were they taking slaves from? Newfoundland, to Europe. Keep in mind that one of the native Americans even had the name Ali and all were classified as Negro. Once they reached Valencia, when the Moors were expelled from Spain and Portugal, some went to North Africa and many. 12. www.mu-atlantis.com came to the eastern seaboard of the United States. Was the slave trade from Africa to America a hoax designed to enslave free Moors under the Fugitive Slave Law Acts and in direct violation of the dozen or so treaties signed with Morocco, Algiers, Tunis, Tripoli, etc.? On page 24 of the book, Africans and Native Americans Forbes says, in any case, at least 3,000 Americans, so called Indians, are known to have been shipped to Europe between 1,493 and 1,501 with the likely total being possibly double that. Most were sent to the Seville area, where they seem to show up in the slave markets as Negroes. These are major contradictions to the whole slave trade story. We were already here in the Americas prior to the so-called slave trade. The missing Indians are us. The slaves sold on the slave markets in the South were initially our people from right here in this hemisphere. As they took our lands here, they enslaved the inhabitants of those lands who were our people. On page 25, he says, The tens of millions of Americans, so-called Indians, who disappeared after 1492 did not all die in the Holocaust inflicted. Within the America, many thousand were sent to Europe and Africa, as slaves, where their descendants still live. Before moving on to the next subject matter, I have four more pieces of information I would like to share with my readers regarding to our Aboriginal heritage. This first piece is an article by Rene Norbergen sent to me by Bro Ricardo Williamson Bay of Philadelphia taken from UFO Report. May 1979. It deals with references in the Chronicles of the Chinese, about their travels in the United States over 1,000 years ago. It refers to the Moors in the Midwest wearing sashes and fezes, caps. It says, The natives are entirely black, they talk about the scorched pygmy people, about men who use wooden arrows with iron points and the mountain of the Eastern Pass with the country of refined gentlemen. These people, the record relates have clothing, caps, sashes, and swords. They have tigers and panthers, which are gentle and tame. They eat millet and wild beasts, and have numerous varieties of birds. www.mu-atlantis.com 13. The Moors of West Africa also ate millet, wore sashes, and caps, and used wooden arrows with iron points. This next article comes from a book entitled, The Secret Archives of the Vatican, by Maria L. Ambrosini. On page 154, there is reference to a document that was in the secret archives of the Vatican describing a voyage by the Queen of Sheba across the Atlantic to America. In a later issue we will show and prove how the Queen of Sheba is really Queen Hapshepsut, and this journey to America is Queen Hapshepsut's journey to the land of the gods, Punt, which is really Punic or Phoenician America. The article says that 
the Queen of Sheba had sailed out of the Mediterranean into the Atlantic and there, 95 degrees to the westward, by an easy passage due to the westerly currents from Africa to America, she had found a land called Sipanso, which Pinzon took to be Japan, fertile and abundant and whose extent surpassed. Africa and Europe sounds like Plato's description of Atlantis. 14. www.mu-atlantis.com www.mu-atlantis.com 15. The next article comes from Leo Wiener's book Africa and the Discovery of America It says, on November 2 Columbus decided to send Rodrigo de Zariz and Luis de Torres who had lived with the Adelon Tato of Murcia and was a Jew and knew Hebrew and Calde and some Arabic to see the king of Cuba in order to present the letters and find out all that was necessary. Naturally, a man who knew Arabic, and another who knew the language of Guinea, as we have heard before, were especially adapted to hold converse with the kings of the Indies. When Columbus wanted to address the kings of the West Indies, he sent interpreters who spoke Hebrew, Arabic, and Chaldean, because they were Moors. It also says that the name Cuba comes from the word Cubanacan, which in turn derives from the word Sipango on their maps. Sipango is the same as Sipanso, mentioned in the previous article regarding the document about the Queen of Sheba sailing to America. This shows that the previous Vatican document was in the possession of Columbus. Thus he was not really lost. Perhaps he called the people Indians because at that time India was called Eastern Ethiopian and the Queen of Sheba. Hapshepsut, was an Ethiopia-slash-Egyptian queen who ruled as a 16. www.mu-atlantis.com Pharaoh This last article was taken from a book called, The Negro Trailblazers. It says, Know ye that on the right-hand side of the Indies. There is an island called California, very near the terrestrial paradise which is peopled by black women without any men among them, because they were accustomed to live after the fashion of the Amazons. They were strong and hardy of bodies, of ardent courage and of great force it goes on to say, they had many ships in which they sailed to other climes to carry out their forage to obtain booty. The various Christian knights assembled to defend the emperor of the Greeks and the city of Constantinople against the attacks of the Turks and the infidels and on this occasion the Queen of California and her court entered this war. I found this very interesting that it said Black Queen entered the Crusade Wars. I will try to find more information on this. Now back to Sir Francis Bacon. Francis Bacon is a man that Every Moor should know about. He was the guiding spirit behind the whole colonization scheme, as seen on this Newfoundland stamp, right. He was involved with the unseen secret origins of America. This man, Francis Bacon, is also the key founder and organizer of the speculative Freemasonry Lodge system as we know it today. Francis Bacon was the head of a secret society who used the name William Shakespeare as a pen name to put out certain information while at the same time remain anonymous. They were backed openly and secretly by King James VI of Scotland who later became King James I of Britain. The Arabic translation of James is Yaqub. The Secret Society headed by Bacon was none other than the original Rosicrucians. And Francis Bacon is none other than the personage known as Christian Rosencruz, the said founder of the Rosicrucians. It was this group that put together the Freemasonic Lodge system we see today. Francis Bacon was taught by the Moors and studied Moorish science. 
the reason for their secrecy is that they were secretly fighting against the Catholic Church which was www.mu-atlantis.com 17. Persecuting the Moors and anyone who studied or practiced Moorish science, via the Inquisition Moorish science is based on the code of mathematics scaling from 0 to 9, 0 to 9, the science of zodiac, and geometry, all employed using scientific method. This science was also called Kabbalah in Europe during this time. This picture from the book Mysteries of the Mexican Pyramids, by Peter Tompkins. The caption of this picture says, Designed for detection and punishments of heretics, the Inquisition was used as a giant pork barrel for the enrichment of crown, church, and inquisitors, while cheerfully eliminating dangerous radicals, those who had been taught medicine, geography, rhetoric, chemistry, physics, mathematics and astronomy by Moorish philosophers in universities, such as Cordova whose libraries have had since been destroyed. The Inquisition was also an excuse to rid the planet of such organized mystics as Illuminati, Pantheists, Manichaeans, and Albigensians. With regards to the picture, right, it says, as a deterrent to possible opposition in New Spain 34. Negroes, including four women were hanged and decapitated in Mexico City. It is said that Francis Bacon, alias Christian Rosencruz, traveled to Egypt, Arabia, Fez, Morocco and Spain to study the Moorish sciences. It was then that he received and developed the plan, an agenda for a new world order. This seems very similar to 18. www.mu-atlantis.com Noble Drew Alley who traveled to the same places and then came back here with a mandate to uplift fallen humanity and usher in a jubilee in which we, the Moors, would be restored back to our rightful inheritance. This is what was prophesied would happen. Francis Bacon and his secret society, the Rosicrucians, whose stated goal was a reformation of the whole wide world, then set up the speculative Masonic Lodge system. This was secretly revealed in a book, he wrote, but which was published after his so-called death, called The New Atlantis. The title The New Atlantis was Code for the plan to build a new world order her in America. The island in the book where everything took place was called Ben Salem meaning Son of Peace. The speculative Masonic Lodge was secretly called Salomon's House in the book and college of the Six Days' Work. Salomon's House of course refers to King Solomon's Temple, which the Masons say that they are striving to rebuild. Hiram Abiff, the central figure in the Masonic mystery was said to be Solomon's chief architect and was a Canaanite. Phoenician, an ancient Moor. The Temple Us rebuilding is also code for what took place with the Templars and the King of Scotland after the Templars was persecuted by the Catholic Church. The Templars inherited Moorish science and the Moorish agenda for a new world order, Novus Ordo Seclarum, and they in turn passed it on to Sir Francis Bacon. Sir Francis Bacon was keeper of the great Seal of England during the time of King James, and he was commissioned by King James I to supervise the translation of what is now called the King James Bible. Sir Francis Bacon and his secret society were masters of code and cipher. Many things dealing with their society and their plan for a new Atlantis was www.mu-atlantis.com 19. 
coded and put in cipher in the King James translation. Francis Bacon and his secret society secretly signed their pen name. Shakespeare, in the King James translation of the Bible. If you go to Psalm 46 and you count 46 words down you will see the word shake, and if you count 46 words up you see the word spear. There were other codes embedded in the original manuscripts. Which one can find using a compass and a square? America, which was a part of ancient Atlantis, and was chosen by the Ascended Masters to be the seat of the New Atlantis, or Novus Ordo Siclorum seen on the bottom of our Great Seal, which is on the one dollar bill. This New Atlantis is the same. The New Jerusalem mentioned in the Book of Revelations. You will notice that the New Jerusalem mentioned in the Book of Revelations is based on the number 12. This number is the key to the Bible and comes from the 12 signs of the zodiac. Astro. Logics is the key to the Moorish science and civilization. They. 20. www.mu-atlantis.com. Twelve tribes of Israel are the twelve signs of the zodiac. Is equals Isis the moon, Ra equals the sun and L equals the stars. Thus the twelve tribes or the nation of the sun, moon, and stars. Jesus and the twelve disciples symbolize the sun, Jesus, and the twelve constellation around it, disciples. Washington DCS layout is based on Moorish science, or the science of the zodiac, the science of mathematics scaling from zero to nine, numerology, and geometry. Geo Earth, metri measurement. The foundation for the new one world government was laid out jointly by the Moors and European Freemasons in the Continental Congress. This is C.M. Bay, left. He taught us that it was Benjamin Banneker whose true name was Ben Bay Emanuel Mu Ali who laid the foundation for the Universal Apprentice Hall for the Science of Government, the New Jerusalem, and it was called the Federal Government System. Its seat is Washington, D.C., or District of Columbia. Columbia was the poetic name of America, and was represented in pictures originally as an aboriginal Moorish woman, sometimes even with a turban. Or Fez called the Liberty Cap. Gradually she was represented looking more and more as a white woman. Ben Bay, right, not only designed Washington, D.C., but he perfected the science of the federal government system that goes along with Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C. is laid out four square just like the New Jerusalem in Revelations and is made to be a scale prototype of the New Jerusalem, based on the code of mathematics scaling from 0 to 9, 0 to 9, zodiac or the number 12 in geometry. Ben Bay the master clock maker made it like a giant astronomical clock. Thus it is symbolic of a giant clock of destiny www.mu-atlantis.com 21. The aforementioned facts can be seen in the layout of Washington, D.C. itself. The Moorish flag has a star in the center of a square red field. Washington, D.C. has a star in the center of its square perimeter. Thus Washington, D.C. is like a giant Moorish flag. It also has the compass and square, showing the geometric aspects of Moorish science otherwise known as masonry. This is the cover page of a book called, America's Oldest Secret, The Talisman of the United States, subtitle, The Mysterious Street. Lines of Washington D.C. This book was quietly passed on to me by a Rosicrucian elder on 125 St in Harlem, New York. He did not say much other than he would come back shortly to pick. 22. 
www.mu-atlantis.com. It back up. The book. Shows how. Laid out in. The very. Street arrangement. Are the universal. Symbols. Or. Glyphs for. The zodiac and planets. In its capacity as a giant clock, certain. Streets also line up with the sun on the days of the solstices and equinoxes. Thus it is a city whose whole layout is based on Moorish science. It is a city perfectly designed to navigate the course of world government. Washington, D.C. is also referred to by C.M. Bay as the hub of the universe, the North Gate. Right, the connection between the Moors and the European Masons who were the so-called founding fathers can be seen in the George Washington National Memorial Museum in Alexandria, Virginia. This is the cover of a booklet published by the memorial and given to me by Bro Royal, a world-renowned master musician www.mu-atlantis.com 23. The following photos were taken inside of the George Washington National Memorial Museum and sent to me by Bro Hannibal Bay in a room called the Grotto Room you will see the W-O-R-D-S M-O-V-P-E-R W-R-I-T-T-E-N above this stands for Mystic Order Veiled Prophets of the N H-A-N-T-E-D Realm Grotto also means a sub iranian chamber of an it I-A-T-I-O-N This is where the secret connection to the Moors is revealed veiled behind sport and play in this room is encased a fez bearing the name Ben Bay whom C.M. Bay taught us was the true name of Benjamin Banneker there are also other fezes encased here with names such as Caliph which means ruler or king in Arabic Kashan Bandar Baya etc. What are Europeans doing with fezes with Arabic names? Attributes and titles. Is it all in mockery or is there a deeper? 24. www.mu-atlantis.com Veiled reason behind. All of this? Right, also there are. Pillars with Moorish. Names, including R. Titles L and B. One day I went to the Grand Lodge Library in New York City on 23rd Street in order to get more information on MOVPER or the Grotto in a pamphlet I found was the following picture an explanation below one of the rituals involves the Court of Mokana which really stands for the Moorish. M.O. Canaanites. Cana, also Ghana, or gold. In this picture dealing with the ritual is a picture showing Europeans bowing prostrate before a Moorish ruler. This is reminiscent of the picture of the American captain delivering tribute before the Bay of Morocco, c. Issue number one. Once again, all of this shows that the Moors were secretly behind the rise of the Europeans through masonry and the plan for a new world order, New Atlantis, New Jerusalem, Novice, www.mu-atlantis.com 25. Ordo Siclarum Right. This steel named after Hammurabi Bay is known as Hammurabi's 
code. The reason? They. Moors passed the plan. To the European Christian. Protestants via Sir. Francis Bacon was because. The Moors were. Falling from power at. The time, and it was. Decided to initiate certain. Europeans and. Make them the custodians. Of the ancient. Moorish knowledge. Until the time we were to wake up and fulfill the plan for a new one world order. Noble. Drew Ali received the mandate and proceeded to wake up the sleeping Moors here in the North Gate. We are the true Hiram. Abif, descendants of the ancient Hamitic slash Canaanite architects of civilization. We possess the secret master's word in our very DNA. It's time that we use the master keys of civilization that we possess in order become the head and cornerstone of the true New World Order. When you hear these words coming from the lips of the Europeans who are Masonic students of Moorish science, don't be fearful. It is a call for you to fulfill your task of bringing in the New World Order. Left, this is the Masonic apron of George Washington. Since George Washington, every president has been a MA26. www.mu-atlantis.com Son except for John F. Kennedy, who was Catholic. Right, we were taught to believe that George Washington was the first president of the United States. This article by United States Senator Charles Mathias shows that it was an amalgamated Moore named John Hansen who was really the first president. If America declared its independence in 1776 and George Washington became president in 1789 who was president between 1776 and 1789 left, actually there were eight presidents before George www.mu-atlantis.com 27 Washington The reason you don't hear about them is because according to the Moorish elders they were all Moors and amalgamated mixed Moors The beast system referred to in the Bible which everyone had to Receive the mark from is the present administrative state founded by Franklin D. Roosevelt and his New Deal. It was supposed to take power from the racist states and centralize power in the federal government, as well as put everyone on an equal footing via various programs. But because of the ignorance of the people as to the truth, it has become a Tyrant and a beast, controlling every sphere of human activity. It has become Big Brother. In fact it must be Big Brother due to the ignorance of the people. If the people knew the truth and what was right there would be no need for Big Brother government. The people would be educated and responsible enough to interact with one another. Without a referee. But because the people are so ignorant, greedy, and undisciplined. They need a big brother government to intervene so that they won't kill and destroy one another. The various regulatory agencies had to be constructed or else there would be all kinds of abuses. For example, if people were honest enough to provide quality food on their own, there would be no Need for an FDA to assure a certain standard of quality. Right. Now if there was no agency to guarantee a certain standard of food quality, people would be trying to sell all kinds of SUB28. www.mu-atlantis.com Standard and dangerous food, not that the FDA is much better. Thus the beast system is the administrative state, made up of a plethora of administrative and regulatory agencies controlling 
and regulating every aspect of your life. It issues privileges in the form of licenses to do that which you have the right to do, in order that the government can control that activity. Thus you can neither buy nor sell, unless you have the mark or approval of the beast or administrative state via various licenses. The beast or administrative state is directly proportional to the ignorance of the people. Abolish ignorance, which is the only evil, and you abolish the beast. Who is able to make war with the beast, only the 144,000 poor righteous teachers, teaching man a new song or paradigm? We will never free ourselves from the beast until we come together and provide for ourselves the services and safeguards presently provided by the beast. Until we provide these services first, any cry that the beast has now jurisdiction over us will not be successful. The Moorish Ascended Masters have been behind everything that has happened on this planet since the beginning. These Ascended Masters were called the 24 Scientists by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and called the 24 Elders round about the throne of God, in the Bible. Our people are an ancient people. Truly we are the ancient of days. This universe is a projection of our conscious mind, a thought, upon the holographic material of the universe, otherwise known as the ethers. This projection caused the ethers to vibrate, and play a universal song called the music of the spheres, and thence engender the myriad forms which we call reality. Thus the universe itself is our paradigm. The Moorish paradigm. Our evolution on this planet. Earth has not been haphazard. There is a plan. When we chose to undergo this study of self on Earth by manifesting on this Earth, we knew we had wise ones among us who had already completed this course of study and would be there to help and guide, albeit indirectly. These as www.mu-atlantis.com 29. Sended Masters have been called by many names. Once again, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad called them the 24 scientists. The Bible makes reference to the 24 elders round about the throne of God. These ascended masters are us, only in a more highly evolved form. You can say in a sense that they are our destiny, our future, as well as our origin. From that level of consciousness, we came into it we will return. All throughout the ages there has been a form of education and initiation that was designed to return man back to his original estate. It has been called the mystery school system. This system of initiation was designed by those who had already traveled that path, the ascended masters. Since the Ascended Masters are those who have 30. www.mu-atlantis.com Already passed through this education, who would naturally be better qualified to assist the members of the human family to evolve back into their higher selves? This esoteric or hidden knowledge involves knowledge of this universe, how it works, and the true understanding of the relationship of God and man. Some scientists say the average person uses only 5 to 10 percent of the mind's full potential. The initiation that the Ascended Masters have designed is intended to allow us to unlock the hidden and unknown capacities of the mind. Once you have achieved a certain level of consciousness you enter the ranks of the Ascended Master. The Ascended Master is like a person at the summit of a mountain with his hand extended down to pull up his fellow human. This is the responsibility of being a true ascended master, and is in fact what allows one to reach the summit in the first place. Those who have already ascended have 
been reaching the hand down to their fellow human throughout the ages. These are the ones who inspire the prophets, reformers, saviors, inventors etc., by communicating via mental telepathy those www.mu-atlantis.com 31. Things the human family of the planet Earth need in order to evolve to the next stage in their earthly initiation throughout the history of man on this planet there have always been individuals among us who have passed through the trials and tribulations it takes to become an ascended master they same way the ascended masters have been assisting individuals they have been assisting the human family as a whole it was the ascended masters who put together religion and the concepts of God for man each concept that man held of God was a direct reflection of our level of consciousness and evolution our relationship to God and how it evolves is similar to that of a child and how his concept of his parents if God is seen as the father or mother and we are the children any parent who is a good parent would want to see their child mature and eventually become a parent also man has been evolving this evolution is seen in our religion and concept of God as we evolve so does our concept of God evolve the final realization is God in man the age we are about to enter is the age of the maturity of man the final conflict or Armageddon which we are now in will result in the human family of the planet earth being initiated into our adulthood or Godhood our concept of God and religion was designed to take us up to this point but the present false religious and ritualisms won't carry us through the initiation or transition that the earth is about to pass through in this day and 32 www.mu-atlantis.com time all false religiousisms and politicalisms will fail it will be hard and fearful for man to make the transition and finally realize that which he has feared and worshipped through the ages is a reflection himself in the cosmic mirror of time this is the maturity of man and the completion of our course of study on this planet we will then graduate into a intergalactic and universal humanity far beyond anything we can presently imagine this is the ultimate goal and purpose of this journal of the Moorish paradigm to contribute in expanding the mind and preparing it for the new Jerusalem the new age Atlantis represented the Golden Age and of the Earth. After the collapse of the Atlantean civilization as a result of the Great Cataclysm of approximate 1500 BC, our ancestors tried to rebuild the Atlantean civilization. Our past attempts failed primarily because the variations in the dialects of the language and rituals which resulted from the breakup of the Atlantean system and the loss of the power of telepathy thus ever since that time the plan to reunite the world under one order has continued however it has continued behind the scenes until recent times this is the time of the new age I close this issue of the journal of the Moorish paradigm with these words from the Holy Quran of the Moorish science temple of America p.6 www.mu-atlantis.com 33. We measure time by cycle ages, and the gate to every age we deem a milestone in the journey of the race. An age had passed, the gate unto another flies open at the age touch of time. This is the preparation age of soul, the kingdom of Emmanuel, of God slash Allah in man peace 100 plus recommended book list one sacred drift essays on the margins of islam 
by Peter Lamborn. Wilson, City Lights Books, San Francisco. To LaRousse Encyclopedia of Archaeology, General Editor, Gilbert. Charles, Picard, Hamlin Publishing Group Limited, New York. Three Spanish Armada, by Winston Graham, Doubleday and Company. Inc., New York. For the Two Babylons, by Rev. Alexander Hislop, Luaros. Brothers, New Jersey. Five The Sign and the Seal, by Graham Hancock, Simon and Schuster. Inc., New York. Six Long Before Columbus, by Hans Halzer, Bear and Company. Publishing, New Mexico. Seven The Mysterious Maya, by George E. Stewart and Jean S. Stewart. National Geographic Society. Eight The Archaeology of North America, by Dean Snow, The Viking. Press, New York. Nine Maya Slash Atlantis, Queen Mu and the Egyptian Sphinx, by Augustus. Laplanzian, Steiner Books, New York. 10 Herodotus, The Histories, translated by Aubrey de Selincourt. Penguin Books. 11 Sailing to Paradise, by Jim Bailey, Simon and Schuster, New York. 12 The Secret Archives of the Vatican, by Maria Luisa Ambrosini. Barnes and Noble Books, New York. 13 Africa and the Discovery of America. Volume I, by Leo Weiner. Innes and Sons, Philadelphia Slash Krauss Reprint Co., New York. 14 Africa and the Discovery of America, Volume II, by Leo Weiner. Innes and Sons, Philadelphia Slash Krauss Reprint Co., New York. 15 Africa and the Discovery of America, Volume III, by Leo Weiner, Innes and Sons, Philadelphia Slash Krauss Reprint Co., New York 34 www.mu-atlantis.com 16 Atlantis, The Antediluvian World, by Ignatius Donnelly, Dover Publications, Inc., New York 17 Worlds in Collision, by Emmanuel Velikovsky, Doubleday and Company, Inc., New York 18 Ages in Chaos by Emanuel Velikovsky, Doubleday and Company. Inc., New York. 19 Peoples of the Sea, by Emanuel Velikovsky, Doubleday and Company, Inc., New York. 20 Fingerprints of the Gods, by Graham Hancock, Crown Publishers. Inc., New York. 21 The Serious Mystery, by Robert K. G. Temple, Destiny Books. Rochester, Vermont. 22 Gods with Bronze Swords, by Costa de Loverdu, Doubleday. And Company Incorporated, New York. 23 Hitler, The Occult Messiah, by Gerald Sister, St. Martins. Press, New York. 24 The Six Black Presidents, by Ozit Bakufu, PIK2 Publications. Washington, D.C. 25 Fusang. The Discovery of America by Chinese Buddhist Priests, by Charles G. Leland, Barnes & Noble Books, New York 26 Lost Cities of Atlantis slash Ancient Europe and the Mediterranean By David Hatcher Childress, Adventures Unlimited Press 27 Africans and Native Americans, by Jack D. Forbes, University of Illinois Press, Chicago 28 Lost Cities of North America, by David Hatcher Childress. Adventures Unlimited Press, Illinois. 29 African Prisons in Early America, edited by Yvonne Van Sertema. Transaction Publishers, New Brunswick, USA. 30 Mysteries of the Mexican Pyramids, by Peter Tompkins. Harper and Row Publishers, New York. 31 The World of the Ancient Maya by John S. Henderson, Cornell. University Press, New York. 32 The World of the Almecs, by Ignacio Bernal, University of California Press, California. 33 Reader's Digests, Mysteries of the Ancient Americas. Reader's Digest Association Incorporated, New York. 
34 Shakespeare, by Anthony Burgess, Penguin Books, New York. 35 Banking, An Illustrated History, by Edwin Green, Rizzoli. New York. 36 500 Nations, by Alvin M. Josephy Jr., Alfred A. Knopf, New York. 37 The Azeks, Gods and Fate in Ancient Mexico, by Cotty Burr www. mu-atlantis.com 35. Land and Werner Foreman, Orbis London. 38 The George Washington Masonic National Memorial Association. Brochure, Alexandria Virginia. 39 The Black Prisons in the Era of the American Revolution. By Sidney Kaplan and Emma Nagrady Kaplan, University of Massachusetts Press, Amherst. 40 Golden Age of the Moor, edited by Yvonne Van Sertema, Transaction. Publishers, New Brunswick, USA. 41 The Life of Benjamin Banneker, by Silvio A. Bedini, Charles. Scribner's Sons, New York. 42 Ancient and Modern Britons, Volume I, by David. MacRitchie, Pine Hill Press Inc., South Dakota. 43 Ancient and Modern Britons, Volume II, by David. MacRitchie, Pine Hill Press Inc., South Dakota. 44 The Ethiopian's Place in History, Rev. John William Norris. G. K. Ose, New York. 45 The Kishite or Children of Ham, Rev. Rufus L. Perry, Literary Union, Brooklyn. 46 The Influence of Ancient Egyptian Civilization in the East and in America, by G. Elliott Smith, G. K. Ose, New York. 47 Moroccan, American Relations, Translation of Excerpts from A Lectire Delivered in Arabic by Ambassador Abdelhadi Tazi. Ministry of Information, Morocco. 48 African Prisons in Early Asia, edited by Yvonne Van Sertema. Transaction Books, New Brunswick, USA. 49 The Origins of the Egyptians, by Augustus Laplanzian, Philosophical. Research Society Incorporated, Los Angeles, California. 50 Earth in Upheaval, by Emmanuel Velikovsky, Pocket Books. New York. 51 The Supreme Wisdom Vol. 2, Elijah Muhammad 52 Genesis Revisited, Zechariah Sitchin, Avon Books, New York 53 Egyptian Civilization, Its Sumerian Origin and Real Chronology L. A. Waddell, Christian Book Club, Hawthorne, California 54 The Dead Sea Scrolls, Robert H. Eisman and Michael Wise Barnes & Noble Books, New York 55 The Martian Enigmas, A Closer Look, Mark J. Carl Otto, North Atlantic Books, California 56 When America Was Africa, excerpted from, More Sense 2000 Journal, Volume 1, No. 2, Spring 1992 57 The First Book of Ancient Mesopotamia and Persia, by Charles Alexander Robinson, Jr. Franklin Watts Incorporated, New York. 58 Fake, The Art of Deception, edited by Mark Jones, University of California Press, California. 36. www.mu-atlantis.com. 59 A History of Civilization, Volume 1, Brinton slash Christopher slash Wolf, Prentice Hall, New Jersey. 60 Heraldic Symbols, Islamic and Western Heraldry, William Leaf and Sally Purcell, Victoria and Albert Museum, London 61 The Cult of the Black Virgin, by Ian Begg, Arkana, New York 62 Sex and Race Volume I, J. A. Rogers, Helga M. Rogers, Florida 63 Sex and Race Volume II, J. A. Rogers, Helga M. Rogers Florida. 64 Sex and Race Volume 3, J. A. Rogers, Helga M. Rogers, Florida. 65 Nature Knows No Color Line, J. A. Rogers, Helga M. Rogers, Florida.
66 Africa's Gift to America, J. A. Rogers, Helga M. Rogers, Florida. 67 Black Britannia, A History of Blacks in Britain, Edward Scobie. Johnson Publishing Company, Chicago. 68 Royal Art of Benin Editor-in-Chief, John O'Neill, Metropolitan Museum. Of Art, New York. 69 Nile River Valley, Robert Caputo, Thomas and Grant Incorporated, Virginia. 70 The People of Cow, by Lenny Riefenstahl, Harper and Row Publishers. Inc., New York. 71 The Mound, Builders, Henry Clyde Chetron, D. Appleton. And Company, New York. 72 The Only Way to Learn Astrology, Volume 1, by Marion D. March and Joan McEvers, ACS Publications Incorporated, California. 73 Kabbalah, Tradition of Hidden Knowledge, Ziav Ben Shimon. Hale V, Thames and Hudson, New York. 74 The Magic of Obelisks, Peter Tompkins, Harper and Row Publishers. Inc., New York. 75 Biblia Kabbalistica, or the Kabbalistic Bible, Rev. Walter Begley. Kessinger Publishing Co., Montana. 76 The Secret Teachings of All Ages, by Manley Palmer Hall, The Philosophical Research Society Inc., California. 77 The Secret Doctrine of the Rosicrucians, by Magnus Incognito. Barnes and Noble Books, New York. 78 The Social Contract, Jean Jakes Rosso, Barnes and Noble. Books, New York. 79 Richardson's Monitor of Freemasonry, by Jabez Richardson. Barnes and Noble Books, New York. 80 Holy Blood Holy Grail, Michael Began slash Richard Lee slash www.mu-atlantis.com 37. Henry Lincoln, Dell Publishing, New York. 81 America's Assignment with Destiny, by Manley Palmer Hall. The Philosophical Research Society Inc., California. 82 The Secret Destiny of America, by Manley Palmer Hall, The Philosophical Research Society Inc., California. 83 America's Secret Destiny, by Robert Hieronymus, Destiny. Books, Rochester, Vermont. 84 Secret Societies, by Nesta H. Webster, A.N.B. Books Publishers. New York. 85 Magna Carta and the Tradition of Liberty, produced by the American Revolution Bicentennial Administration, Washington, D.C. 86 Handbook of the Law of Trusts, by George Gleason Bogert. And George Taylor Bogert, West Publishing Co., St. Paul, Minnesota. 87 A Treatise on the Law of Property, by William F. Walsh. Baker, Voorhis & Co., New York. 88 Black's Law Dictionary, by Campbell Black, West Publishing. Co., St. Paul, Minnesota. 89 Webster's New 20th Century Dictionary, Simon and Schuster, New York. 90 The Timetables of History, by Bernard Grun, A Touchstone. Book, Simon and Schuster, New York. 91 Ancient Mexico, by Henri Stierlin and Benedict Taskin. Company du Lever d'Ar, Germany. 92 Francis Bacon and His Secret Society, by Mrs. Henry Pott. Robert Banks and Son, England. 93 Clock of Destiny, Volume 1, by C. M. Bay. 94 Clock of Destiny, Volume 2, by C. M. Bay. 95 Circle of Life, by C. M. Bay. 96 Oral Statements and Prophecies of Prophet Noble Drew Alley. Compiled by Bro R. Love L. 95 Holy Quran of the Moorish Science Temple of America, by Drew Alley. 96 The Mayan Factor, by Jose Argels, Bear Company. Santa Fe, New Mexico. 97 Atlantis, by Jeffrey Ash, Thames and Hudson Limited, London. 98 The Mound Builders, by Henry Clyde Chetron, D. Appleton. And Company, New York. 99 The Moors, by Budget Meekin, 
the Macmillan Company. New York. 100 The Land of the Moors, by Budget Meekin, the Macmillan. Company, New York. 101 The Diplomatic Relations with the Barbary Powers 1176.